Karibuni sana, karibuni sana. Tunashukuru kwa kuwa umeendelea kutufuata. Yaani for those who don't understand Swahili. Karibuni sana means welcome. Thank you so much for tagging along with us. Now there's something that we need to mention here as we begin a conversation day on grace to live that by God's grace. Y'all people have been tuning in. You have shared these things with people and we have gotten many people getting born again this past several days. And so we are very excited for that, all right? So keep on doing what you're doing. Now, we want to talk about the grace of God and the grace of God basically in terms of how we live life today. Question is does grace matter after salvation? Is it just it or there's something more than that? Now, John Piper says this word. He says, there is good news, not just in the gospel, but also in Christian living. Yes, the gospel is, we receive the gospel and then we are saved by grace. However, there is much more that grace does in our lives, more than just saving us. And there is something that we need to look forward to because some of us after tumeokoka tunashanga, so what's the big deal? Tumeokoka alafu sasa. Well, alafu sasa, the Lord gives us grace to live and want to just unwrap that whole package and see what is grace useful for. With me to unravel this conversation is a very good team of gentlemen here. Um, Nikona, the one and only King Just As. Asante. Onajua kuna zile maprogram za kiswahili kitambo za KBC walikuwa waki introduce mtu wako wapu ivuwa nsema. Na upande wangu kulia Nikona Just As. Alo masikia. Abari wa skilizaji. So that's just one. Then Matt, one and only. Muzungu, wewe tutacha kuita mzungu mwitu. I think you have become so polished nowadays. Now you can be mzungu, mzungu mtaani. Mzungu mtaani. Eh, mzungu mtaani. Mtaani bet. Tabia zako zime change. Eh, ah, sawa. I appreciate. And then, <laughs> and then of course, uh, Saddam mwenyewe. Ah, sante. Ndwa hapo. Karibu sikilizaji. Karibu sikilizaji. Well, people, uh, we need to unwrap this conversation. Tukona the kachache, so let's just uh, hit the nail as much as you can. Sama. So the grace of a God. Of course, we all know Know about uh, the hymn Amazing Grace and how sweet that sound and all those things. I think many people, uh, when you think about the issues of the grace of God, we just think about it as Roman, uh, uh, sorry, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 and that's it. And so it's like, yeah, so I'm born again. So psh, is there any big deal uh, about that? And so I want you guys just to help us to unwrap grace to live. What does it mean that God has given us grace to live? That means beyond salvation, kuna kitu God amefanya, alright? So uh, vile mungu watawa saidia kunisaidia kufanyi conversation, tunanidu kusaidiana ando tujue neema inatutosha mpaka wakati yupi. Justo. Thank you so much. Uh, now that you're talking about grace to live, yes. it's good to appreciate that uh, uh, one of the struggles that I've seen many people going through, watu waliokoka, mm -hmm. lakini unapata wanaenda tena kuishi, you know, kwa matendo, it's right. about the law, doing good. No, if you don't do this, then you feel very guilty. Okay. And you're really struggling. And it's one of those things that Paul is rebuking the church mm. in Galatia. All right. That uh, who has bewitched you? Mulianza na roho. Sasa mnaingia kwa mwili. Right. And right. Uh, yeah, because these guys gave their lives to Christ, but then there come some other teachers along the way who are pushing them again to adapt the Jewish way of life. Okay. And so, and he's rebuking them mm. on that account. Count. All right. And so it, the grace does not just end at the point of salvation, mm. but we, it continues even beyond that, that we are living by grace. Could you be having like, a, a, now you, you mentioned that, I'm sorry to, to just uh, hold you on that. So if there is, a, more grace does more than just saving us. So would you say that there is also a different definition of this grace that we need to have in our minds other than just grace? to save me, you know, or how would you explain that? So Ephesians 2 says, by grace, you've been saved through faith. But then now we are saying that there's grace to live and you're trying to, as, as try to unwrap that, just maybe try to bring it chini to a layman's language to you. After Wokovu, I think Neema ilikuwe neishi ya hapo. So tukisema kuna Neema ya kuishi. There are, of course, there are many, many things that we encounter as Christians right, right. Uh, beyond the point of salvation. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about the hardships that are there. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about, you know, even the temptations that we are encountering each and every day. Right. Uh, talk about, uh, you know, sometimes you find yourself that you have even messed, you know, along the way. Mm. And so at that point then, it's very easy to get back, you know, to, right. to a life of legalism mm. that you're living by the law. Right. And so looking at these... Um, is that um, uh, still this grace, we are still talking about undeserved 
favor and okay. mercy. Because right. there is there is nothing that you're doing, mm -hmm. you know, to really buy into this, to really buy the gift of God. Okay. This is a gift and it's been given to us free of charge. All right. And so there is no much. I think our work is basically to submit mm. uh, to the will and to the word of God and to okay. what Christ has already done for us mm -hmm. uh, on the cross. Right. Uh, so that uh, the grace now goes to another extent mm. of training us right. in terms of how we live uh, the life that God has given to us ah, okay. so that Christ does not leave us at that point, but he continues mm. with us through the journey of salvation. Okay. And this is what we find in Titus chapter 2, right. uh, verse 11 and mm -hmm. 12, mm -hmm. that for the mm -hmm. grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation yes. for all people, right. but does not end at that point. Mm. Uh, talking from verse 12, that uh, it trains us to renounce ungodliness right. and worldly passions okay. and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives mm. in the present age mm. of course waiting for our blessed hope right. that is the appearing of the glory of our great god right. and savior jesus christ mm -hmm. so that's what you're talking about in relation to grace that it is training us mm -hmm. you know there are many times we find ourselves i found myself for example at some point that uh, i just feel you know things are not getting along yeah. well with me as i will desire yeah and so sometimes there are those moments that you feel you know there are some outbursts even mm. towards your wife right and at that moment mm. uh you have have the word of God, you know, to, the, the Holy Spirit, of course, reminds us mm, even mm. of the scriptures right. that this is how God expects us to behave right. in particular situations. Right. And so not once have I gone back to my wife and told her, you know, I really messed. I did not need, you know, to act the way I acted. Mm. I really went out of my way right. because this is what the word of God expects of me. All right. And so there is that point that the grace of God is teaching me and God is just shedding that light in my life to show me, you know, mm. up if you meuma inje, right. you need to come back. This is mm -hmm. what God expects of us. And mm -hmm. so each and every day, there is that life of submission right. to God's word. All right. So so basically we, we are saying that grace is active. So um, you, you are born again. By grace, you have been saved. But also then by grace, we will continue living the Christian life. Now, and maybe um, for you guys, as you, you can chip in in this conversation of grace. Um, that's what grace trains us. And everyone who once they are born again, and it's a problem to them because one, some probably somebody is tuning in, and they do not want to respond to the call, um, you know, to to come to Christ because they think I'm going to let him down. I'm going to let Jesus down, you know. Um, um, you don't know how many things I've already uh, dived into. Yani ni mengi andani, ndani, ndani. I don't think God's grace can enable me to do this. Just as he's saying that grace trains us. And so maybe uh, you can say one or two things on, a, on account of uh, that kind of reasoning. I think some Christians have a wrong mentality that, you know, they, they believe I'm saved by grace, like you mentioned in Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Mm -hmm. And they're grateful for that. But they believe it's like uh, the, there's that God has opened the door through Jesus for right. you to now to step into the Christian life. Right. And it's like you've entered a long hallway. Mm. At the end of that hallway is another door that takes you to heaven when you die. Mm -hmm. And they almost had this mentality that Jesus helps you open the door for salvation. And then, when that's not really the reality. Right. What it is, is Jesus opens that door upon mm. salvation. Mm -hmm. And he walks with you. Mm -hmm. Mm. Until now you step into heaven with him. Right. And um, probably that's the, the, the that's what you're using the word train. Yes. And right. so you can think of him almost he's holding your hand, mm -hmm. training you, you know, for the power of the spirit, all these things that this mm -hmm. is how you live. This is how I, I can give you grace for this. Right. I can empower you for mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really powerful. There's other verses like First Corinthians 15, 10, where Paul says, mm. I worked harder than all the other apostles, but but not by my strength, right. but through the grace of God. Right. So we can see that grace is not just about salvation. It's also about empowering me to do work. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, a lot of verses. There's a lot of things that we can yeah, say yeah. about that. Yes, Adam, anything that you want to throw inside there? Just, uh, um, yeah. Jude, Jude 24, I think, says what Marty says. Yeah. Um, to him who is able to keep us. To keep from us from stumbling, stumbling, right. And to present us before his glorious mm. presence. So he has saved us. He will keep us. And then he will present us right. before his glorious presence mm -hmm. in exceeding mm -hmm. joy. Mm -hmm. that, that for me, it's so encouraging. Yeah. Because the work of a believer is not, mm. um, it's not a, a lone walk. Right. It's not a, a, you're not desolate. Yes. You have Christ with you from the beginning till the end. Right. 
Yeah. And he's holding your hand and he's trading you. And basically that is what we are saying people, because if you're tuning in and, and, and you're, you're, you're listening to this conversation, grace does not just save you. Grace gives you ability or grace trains you. And pretty much think about a coach training a team or, you know, somebody older holding the, the hand of a baby who is learning how to walk training. And, and that's what the grace of God does. Now, if, you, if, you, if you're one of those people that you're wondering, ah, you know, these salvation things and God has poked your heart and the spirit of God has wooed you and you are, you're still trying to think that you're the most awesome person that you want to sort yourself out and then Christ can come and just uh, put the crib on it. That's a deception because grace saves you and grace trains you to live the Christian life. Again, if you need to follow up in this conversation, I want you right now to check us out at www.kuzaapp.com top right corner, ukitaka kuokolewa, ukitaka kusikia message ya ujumbe wa gospel nigani, top right corner of that at www.kuzaapp.com utapata the receive Christ button. Listen to that gospel conversation. Post up with Obado. So number one, we are saying grace to live. Basically, grace trains us. That's what Justin was telling us about, right? So once grace trains us and it is training me to live the way Titus is telling us, how then does a grace strengthen me to continue? The because if it is training me now, then one of the worries uh, that is in many people's heads is, am I going to make it to the end? The things are so many. Temptation ni mob, you know, in fact, uh, one of those uh, one of those songs in a cross movement album they say, you know, how how are the guys supposed to to you know to keep you and and girls are walking half naked, you know? And he's thinking, <laughs> hey, you know, and and and, and probably somebody is thinking there like the psalmist. How can a young man keep his way pure? How can a young man keep his way pure? And somebody said, and many young men today they ask, they turn to God and tell him, you see, you also know the problem. How how can we keep ourselves pure? Well, you're saying grace can help us to keep pure, but how does it strengthen us then to pursue? Let, let me give you an example yeah. of how grace keeps us pure, Marvin, mm-hmm. and how it's training us to now renounce, right. you know, impurity right. and to right. now to train us to be pure. Mm-hmm. An example, let's say that you're you're feeling angry. You know, now Sasa Mtu, Anatusi Wewe. Now me as a man, my natural response is, is to respond, Nito Tusi Ewe Pia. And so those are my temptations. Yeah, yeah. But I do, I think now an example of grace training me could yeah. be, there's a verse that pops into my head. This okay. verse could be Ephesians 4.32. Mm-hmm. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted and forgiving one another mm-hmm. as God in Christ has forgiven you. Right. So that's an example I think of grace can now just, sometimes the spirit of God is bring you a verse. Right. Another example could be you come, you're in that, you're in that moment of the Mtu Anatusi and then now you say, God, I, you can pray for grace. I need your grace now mm-hmm. because my response is going to be sinful. Mm-hmm. And Hebrews 4, 16 is, is a great verse to help us, encourage us right. to pray. Mm-hmm. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Mm-hmm. So there's a grace that can give, that can empower us in a time of need. Right. I'm in need now to because I want to be obedient. I don't want to sin. So we can ask for this grace to mm. do all sorts of things. Second mm. Thessalonians two sixteen through seventeen mm-hmm. says that we can receive comfort and hope through grace. Mm. I can believe that in this moment, as I pray for this, there's a comfort that God will answer this prayer. Right. He can give me grace to do that. Mm-hmm. And then you know, because in your mind you may be thinking, I James one nineteen tells me, um, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Mm-hmm. Colossians 4, 6 encourages me that it's possible even in angry situations mm-hmm. to speak right. with grace because okay. it says, let your speech always be gracious, mm-hmm. seasoned with salt so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Right. So it's possible to speak with grace in, in situations that make you angry. Mm-hmm. Our flesh does not have to rule us. Our sinful passions don't have to have the best of us. We can now go to God and ask for grace. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes he gives us a verse because this Marvin is kind of like, no temptation has seized you except which is common to men, but God right. is faithful, always giving us a way of escape. Mm. As an example of grace now being imparted to you in circumstances and situations. So I'd really encourage people, if there's a particular sin that you struggle with, name it. Mm. Now, believe Hebrews 4.16, that I can go before the throne of God and ask for grace 
and situationally. Right. And I can in Second Thessalonians two sixteen to seventeen says, mm. find comfort and hope that you can receive grace mm. in those difficult times and situations. Mm. And then now believe in faith that God can come through for you. And maybe then, that, I, maybe that's the other thing that we need to probably um, try and 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 respond to because okay, fine, I've prayed, and sometimes it just feels like um, you know it's just this key technical thing I've done. So I've prayed and it's like I'm trying to get my emotions into a certain box so that I don't think or feel in a certain way. So how, what is the practicality of surrendering to the power of grace, strengthening us to face situations? Because how do we move from just cliche into, you know what, I have trusted, um, you know, grace is at work in me and I'm honestly, I know that I'm giving, I'm gaining the strength to overcome these things. One thing I would say is even if you're in those situations in Unaomba, mm. ya Mungu, yeah. and you still Unaomba Chini, yeah. I still think that that posture of faith and going to him is is powerful. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and we need to, it's a good habit to build yourself up into going before the Lord, mm. asking for grace. And I think also too, when you fall into sin and temptation, they need to remember that God is a God of, of all grace. Mm. You know, First mm. John 2, 1 through 2 says, it encourages us that when we do mess up, the Lord is with us. He's willing to forgive us and, and help us in those certain things. First John 1 John 1.9 tells me to confess my sins to him mm-hmm. and he can cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Right. So there's an element of grace that comes to you even when you do mess up. And so I think just even the posture of coming and asking for grace, even though I maybe do fall into sin, um, I think is still a positive thing. Right. You know, because it may take some time before some of those appetites change. Mm-hmm. Uh, a good prayer to pray is God help me to love you more, you know, and help me not to love this sin, right. you know, the way that I do love it. Right. Give me your grace in that area. I mean, mm. there's, there's a lot of things that you can pray for right. in that. So grace strengthens us. Now we have basically said two things. One, grace not only saves us, we are saved by grace, Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. That is true. However, we're also saying that grace trains us, trains us, Titus 2, 11, 12, trains us to live this life that we need to live. Now, remember that no one can live the Christian life except Christ. And that is why Christ is the most critical thing. Otherwise, you will flop. And they say is that inside of you, he will give you grace. To walk the journey, but it also gives you grace to be strong, to endure through it. Now, do you want to know a little bit more about some of these things that will help you to grow in your faith? Well, you need to do one of three things. One, you need to be tuning in anywhere. You know, you need to go out, check out on Spotify and any other file that is there where you can listen to things. You need to go to any now any podcast channel, you'll find the Kusa app and you need to listen. Secondly, you need to download the Kusa app. If you've not had it on your phone yet, Tafadali man say, what on earth are you doing? By the way, you need to get that going in. If you you're an Android fella, we got you covered. This is not just an iPhone issue. But however, as iPhone people, we've got you covered. So I think, uh, by the way, enough to make, uh, you know, kwa, what we're going to iPhone experience here, a bit more lively. <laughs> Anyways, and <laughs> kwa, kwa, kwa Google Play Store. IOS to download the Kusa app. That is going to be a good thing. Now, if you do not have a smartphone, the Lord is with you. You can check us out on www.kusaapp.com and you'll get all the blogs, all the resources there. Again, just a reminder to reiterate, if you're not born again and you need to know the gospel message, you need to check out www.kusaapp.com, top right corner, there's a receive Christ button. Press it and you will see a very great presentation of the message of the love of God, aka the gospel. And once you respond to that please let us know let us know if you want to uh somebody to pray with you if you are you need more information about what it means to be born again or you've actually gone to be born again and we'll try as much as you can to connect you to a bible believing church next or closer to you all right people land so we have raised two key things one grace trains us secondly grace gives us strength strength to overcome all these things but finally then uh so that maybe you can walk us through all this how do we live in grace so i'm i been trained i'm born again um i'm I'm christ by his spirit is graciously training me uh to do the things i need to do strengthening me to remain uh in the path and 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 in the ways that he calls me to so how do i then live in grace so then people can say i am a graceful person (laughs) no you you're a person in a full graced religion um, mm-hmm. in the sense that 
Tetas in a sema uh the grace of God has appeared yeah. to all men. Yeah. Um I can replace that word grace with Christ. Mm. Uh Christ has appeared to all men. Mm-hmm. Okay? So whoever believes in Christ will renounce all ungodliness, live a self-controlled righteous life. Okay? Okay? Mm-hmm. So when you're asking what does it how how do I live in grace is yeah. basically yeah. asking how do I live in Christ? How do I live as a Christian? Now, there is a way that every believer experience more of Christ in their daily living. Okay. Um we are reminded of this in uh 2 Corinthians 3:18. Mm-hmm. Uh, Behold in the Lord, right? Behold in his grace, in his glory, and you will be are transformed from one degree of glory to another. Okay. There is a moreness of Christ that you experience. And James and I say maybe I can take James 4. Mm. And I say my God gives more grace. James 4:6. Okay. Who whom does he give more grace to? Those who are humble. Right. All right. Mm-hmm. So one thing that I should do strive to be humble before the Lord mm. and he will give me more grace he will give me okay. more of Christ mm-hmm. that's what i mean right 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 it, it is Christ that strengthens me mm-hmm. both to will and to do his good pleasure mm-hmm. okay uh, philippians chapter 2 mm-hmm. so this thing is how to live um, by grace is basically saying live knowing that you are in Christ right. live as a christian and one major characteristic of a christian that a, an unchristian doesn't have mm. is humility okay towards god humility Being, towards god uh, right. submit yourself to god mm-hmm. mm-hmm. non believers don't have that one they don't have that one yeah so when you submit yourself they cannot have that one they cannot right. really that's the right word they right. cannot until mm. god gives it to them yeah and so god's grace is basically as uh, teaching you to be humble yes. towards God mm. and you now have to always be humble right. towards God that's the only way uh-huh. to hack it to live in grace so that now it will it living in grace doesn't mean uh now I will involve myself in sinful activities now that I have been saved by grace as just as was saying but because I've been saved by grace and Matt is saying we are strengthened and trained by grace right therefore i will live rightly with uh, uh according to the word of god okay so the sense of submission is to be in total awe of christ and also obedient mm. obedience of christ uh that's how you live in grace so the life of a believer is a life that is filled with obedience and humility towards god and that's why paul is praying uh om- almost in all of all of his letter and says may the grace of god be with you mm. ephesians chapter i think 6 sikisha the last verse and mm. may the grace of god be with you mm. right mm-hmm. so that grace is basically reminding them right and say you guys are different and you are in some in you are, you, are, you are separated from the world mm. and therefore Live right. humbly towards the Lord. Any practical tips that we can we, we can say? Okay, fine. So we we're, we're saying you need to live in grace. Any any practical tips that we can tell the guys who are tuning in? Like, okay, so it may it it looks like this. It looks something like this. You know, like you know, living living in grace looks something like this. So I mean, what 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 are a few things that probably you can say? Okay, yeah. uh, these Prayer. ones can be a good pointer that you're actually on that path. A prayer is one major one. Prayer. Yeah, right. prayer is total submission to God saying every time when you go down on your knees or mm. you bow your head. Right. But even as you're walking and praying you're mm. basically telling God I cannot you can. Mm-hmm. Uh, take charge of me. Okay. Uh provide for me, protect me, mm-hmm. guide me. Right. Prayer is one great example of humility and living in grace. Uh prayer mm-hmm. you pray to God to help you mm-hmm. be obedient. Right. Can I yes, yeah, build, yeah, go for to build on that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. It's frequently that some of us too will struggle with money. money. And so we're like, me, 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 sota. And so now one of the things is the Bible tells us, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God at so the proper time he may exalt you. Mm-hmm. Cast your anxieties on him um, because he cares for you. Right. So I want to come before the Lord humbly and just tell him, I'm broke. 
Because now, generally speaking, our temptation is, ni kupigia rafiki yako ama your family member and kudanganya yeye, I'll pay you back. You know, say tuma so, you know, or tuma, you know, you know, whatever, giri moja, something like that. And you tell them, I'll pay you back. But in your mind, you know, I will not pay them back because I'm very broke. Okay. And so now what you're doing is you're lying, swindling them out of money. Mm-hmm. And that's the sin. So now what I think the better thing to do is you come before the Lord in mm-hmm. prayer, like mm-hmm. Saddam is saying and saying, humbly, God, I cannot get myself out of this situation. Mm-hmm. So I'm asking that you would please provide for me. Mm-hmm. And the amazing thing is if you look in scriptures, like in second Corinthians, you know, chapter eight, mm-hmm. even chapter nine, mm-hmm. it was through the Macedonians being generous because of the grace of God yeah. working through them to now be generous mm-hmm. to those who were struggling. Mm-hmm. So we need to trust in faith that God will give grace mm-hmm. through another brother in Christ. Who, to needs, now, who needs also to trust in God, to have the grace to give. Yes. Give, yeah. And okay. so, So that's an example, I think, of, you know, how I need to trust in those certain situations. Right. There's other scenarios I can give you, but mm-hmm. I think it's important for us. Do you have faith mm. in God to provide for you for grace? Right. Or are you saying, I have to do this myself? So mm. therefore, watch any Danganya, watch any Iba, mm. I'm a watch any Kuna sponsor. You know, there's many things we right. can say to help right. take care of my mm. struggle with I'm money. I'm Alexa's lady. Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I don't think yeah. I've heard that term. No, no, that is, brother. The other situation also yeah, I'm yeah. thinking about is with regards to seeing, mm. um, f- I think, is first Corinthians 10. Uh, Ile Nasema, uh, there is no temptation that is not common to man, but 10, that 13, which, 10, 13, 10, 13, yeah. 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 And so, Ikisha Nasema, mm. and God will provide a way. Right. Right. To provide uh, a way we, of escape, yeah. A way of escape. So, mm. even when it comes to sin and we see uh, this is a really hard, yeah. like this temptation is so true. Mm. It's like, umekewa nyama choma hapo hivyo mzuri na unambuwa usikule. Right. Na uko nja ujekula three mm. days. That is a real temptation. Right. But then if mm. if you if if you ask God uh give your way through this, yeah. He will. He will he will provide. And provide so that yeah. the, so prayer is key, right. it's quite practical, mm. not just for provision, uh, and also even mainly for provision mm. for life and also for to live godly. Right, right. Mm. Just too. Okay, for me, what I can say maybe as an example is, um, okay, in relation to what Vic is talking about, about temptation, I know there are many times, you know, you're going through things and you're like, I just need to, you know, to be maybe to keep a positive mind. I need to try much harder to overcome this mm. kind of a thing. Yeah. I think this is something that we encounter several, you know, we, we've grown and we've really battled. Personally, I've battled, I, I think I really battled in my early stages of faith with this, like, you know really struggle to be better, to be a good person mm-hmm. by my own strength, by my own energy. Mm-hmm. And the more you try, the more you find yourself you are failing. And this becomes very discouraging and you feel as though uh, the whole conversation of faith, this is something beyond, you know, any human ability. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what happens is the moment you get to appreciate about God's grace, that if there comes temptations, there comes those moments that it is so difficult for you that God is able to provide, you know, even a way out for you in whatever temptation. Sometimes it is in terms of our own weaknesses. We have issues we are struggling with. And maybe you've prayed God over and over. You want God to come and, you know, help you overcome something. And we have an example of Paul. Paul, when you are talking mm. about asking God, you know, for that strength, uh, He's praying. He has this, whatever we call it, the thorn in the flesh in Second yeah. Corinthians mm-hmm. chapter 12. And so he's physically challenged and uh, he feels like, you know, God, I really need you. And he had prayed over and over. But one way of God answering his prayer yes. is, you know, telling him my grace is sufficient for you. He does right. not specifically remove the problem, mm. but of course, uh, you know, provides the grace for Paul to go through and even to live by that, what we'll call that uh, thorn in the okay, flesh. Right. And so it's important for us to see, you know, grace at work mm. in all aspects. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, 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 well. I don't know where you are at in these matters. If you're born again, especially if you're born again, this conversation is particularly for you that mm. the grace of God is available not only to save you and he has, if you're born again, he has saved you by grace, but he will sustain you. You do not have power alone by your 
yourself to do this. That is why God gives you grace to save you, but also grace to continue on. He trains you and it, whatever it is that you need him to do for you, he is ready to train you. He is ready to strengthen you and he's ready to give you what it takes for you to live life, a victorious Christian life. Why? Because grace is sufficient. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, probably you're just about to throw in the towel, please, you need to make sure that you keep your eyes locked on these truths. There is grace sufficient for you and I. Until next time, this is a Podcast. Make sure that you link up with us on the necessary uh, links, www.kuzaapp.com. Check us out, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Spotify, and any other thing that you want as well. After Tukuza Apu, by the way, lock in and it's going to be a good thing. Baraka until badai. <laughs>